We are now going to explore what charge actually is based upon those experiments that we've done and what scientists have actually figured out in the century since then. So in our first experimental model, we said that there was glass charge and that there was plastic charge. And this had to do with rubbing either a glass rod with silk or a plastic rod with wool. Now, what we're going to call glass charge is actually positive charge, and plastic charge is negative charge. Again, these are just the naming convention. There's no reason why they can't be switched, other than the fact that we've been using these names to correspond to glass and plastic since, since Benjamin Franklin. Now, there could have been a third option. For instance, we could have called this red, green, blue. But there isn't a third option simply because we've never found it. We've never found a third material that would attract both plastic and glass if it's charged. Now, positive and negative charges are going to correspond to particles. And an example of a positively charged particle is a proton, which is in the center of an atom. An example of a negatively charged particle is an electron. Now, these are not the only negatively charged particles and positively charged particles. There's actually a lot of particles that are positively charged and that are negatively charged. But in normal atoms, these are the particles we worry about. Particle physics and things happening in space is where you actually get those other types of particles, so we don't need to worry about that. However, when we do talk about positive and negative charge, you want to be careful to not just always call those electrons and protons, since that's not actually what's going on at a microscopic level. If we think about the atom, we know that there's an electron cloud, so we're using a quantum mechanical model here, an electron cloud around the nucleus, and the nucleus contains protons and neutrons. Now, the neutrons are neutral, so they have zero charge. We don't need to worry about them at all in our model, so we're not going to even show them. And it's important to recognize that charge is an inherent property of the particles. You can't remove the negative from an electron. If you have an electron, by definition, it is negative. That's inherent in it. If you have a proton, by definition, it is positive. In a way, it's one of the few things that actually defines it to be an electron or a proton. So atoms have both of these positive and negative uh, particles in them. And so the atom itself is neutral if you have the same number of negatives as positives, meaning the same number of electrons as protons. And so a standard neutral atom, if I just tell you you have an atom of carbon, that would have six electrons and six protons. So that is neutral. So again, the reason why we want to think about positive and negative charge and not just protons and neutrons is that you can have ions. And ions themselves can have charge. That's the definition of an ion compared to a neutral atom. A positive ion has an excess of protons compared to the electrons. So if this has lost one electron, so it only has four electrons, it now has a net charge of one, plus one. Now, the negative ion has actually gained an additional electron. So that means it has a net charge of negative one. Now, the E that I'm using here is a symbol that we use, a vari not quite a variable, a constant really, that represents the fundamental unit of charge. So the charge of an electron or the charge of a proton. So plus one E means that we had a net charge here of one proton more than an electron. Here we have negative one E, so we had one electron more than a proton. So when I talk about transferring charge, we are usually just talking about moving electrons or moving ions. Protons are really held tightly in the center of the atom. So we don't actually talk about moving individual protons per se. I can't reach into a carbon, which this isn't, this is five, not six, but I can't reach into a carbon and pull out a proton to turn it into an ion. In that case, I've actually changed what the atom itself is. So whenever we're talking about only transfer of charge, not a nuclear reaction, then just think about adding and removing electrons. You can get a positive ion by removing an electron. You can get a negative ion by adding an electron. So when we talk about charge, charge moving, charge transfer, we're either moving electrons or just moving the ions themselves. So now let's think about what was happening with that charging process when things were being rubbed. 
So friction can actually break some of the surface molecules. And for those of you who've had a lot of chemistry, you might want to argue about what type of molecules that would be where friction can just break it. But we're physicists in this class, so unfortunately we do terrible things when we talk about chemistry. So imagine that we have our molecule made up of, in this case, five atoms. And you think about the bonds as little springs. That's what we do in intro physics. So as you are rubbing, we maybe manage to break some of these bonds. And we now actually have two little molecules, which in themselves are ions, that this one has ended up with a positive charge, and this one has ended up with a negative charge. How can that happen? Well, this actually took an extra electron with it. Now, one thing to note is on the previous two slides, we were talking about atoms, and now we've jumped to molecules. This is fairly hand wavy because we won't normally be talking about the details of it, but it's important to get through your head that we're talking about transfer of electrons and for instance not this has an excess proton and this has an excess electron that's not what's happening so basically this has pulled an electron away from the molecule on the left so we now have a positive charge here and a negative charge here so what can then happen is that one of these for instance the positive one ends up on the wool and the negative one stays with the plastic. And if this happens over and over and over again, this means you now have a net negative charge on the plastic and a net positive charge on the wool. So that's the way to think about what's actually happening when we are charging these rods. We're breaking some molecules on the surface, not that many of them, and some of them are ending up on the silk and the wool, some of them are staying on the plastic and the glass, and because there's a pattern to which ones stay in place and which ones uh, go onto the fabrics, we actually get these different charges. Now note that the total amount of charge is always staying the same. This is an important part of the model. We're not creating or destroying charge that initially we have lots of positive charges and lots of negative charges and we have the same amount. So initially it starts neutral, but then we are pulling them into two groups and we're adding up, ending up with an extra minus in one group such that we're missing a minus in the other. So that's what's going on thinking about this at a microscopic level. We still have some additional work to think about, uh, especially to understand how neutral objects come into this, but this is at least a start.